In this video, I'll show you how to find derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. An exponential function is where the output of the function is a number raised to the value of the input. For example, f of x equals 3 to the x is an exponential function. In contrast to a monomial, where the exponent is a number, an exponential function has the variable in the exponent. The number is called the base. Let's take a moment to think about what this would look like if you graphed it. Here are axes that we'll use to graph f of x and an approximation of its derivative. First, we'll show a graph of f of x. Here is a graph of f of x. Next, let's think about what the graph of its derivative might look like. We'll start by picking a fixed delta x and look at how delta y and delta x change together as we draw the graph of f of x. What we can observe is that for a fixed delta x, the ratio of delta y to delta x starts off close to zero and then gets larger and larger. Take a few moments to think about what the graph of this ratio would look like. Now, let's draw a graph that approximates f prime of x. What you should notice here is that the graph of f prime of x has the same basic shape as the graph of f of x. It turns out that if you have a general exponential function, f of x equals a to the x, then its derivative is f prime of x equals ln of a times a to the x. So, in the example here, the derivative is f prime of x equals ln of 3 times 3 to the x. Keep in mind that ln of 3 means the natural log of 3, which is just a number. So the derivative of an exponential function, f of x, is a constant multiple of f of x. And that's why the graph of f prime of x had the same basic shape as the graph of f of x. Here are a few examples. At the top of the screen, I'll include the rule for finding the derivative of an exponential function. Pause the video and think about for which of these examples we can use the rule for exponential functions. For f of x equals 7 to the x, you can see that the base is 7 and the exponent is just x. So we can use the rule and the derivative would be the natural log of the base times the original f of x. For f of x equals e to the x, you can see that the base is e, which represents a number, and the exponent is just x. So we can use the rule, and the derivative would be the natural log of the base times the original f of x. And you might remember that the natural log of e is just 1. So in this case, the derivative of the function g of x is just e to the x. If we look at h of x, it has a base of negative 3 and an exponent of x. But if you tried to use the rule to find the derivative of h of x, you'd run into trouble because the natural log of negative numbers isn't a real number. You can't use the rule with h of x. If we look at j of x, the base is a positive number. However, the exponent is sine of x, and our rule only applies when the exponent is just a variable, not another function. What if we had something a little simpler in the exponent, like 2x? At first, it looks like we're in the same situation as before, because our rule for derivatives of exponential functions requires that we just have x as an exponent. However, in some cases, we can use properties of exponents to rewrite the equation. In this case, we can rewrite 7 to the 2x as 7 squared to the x, and now we have rewritten j of x as a base of 49 and an exponent of x so we can apply the rule. Next, we'll look at derivatives for logarithmic functions. Probably the most common logarithmic function you'll see is called the natural log, which is written f of x equals ln of x. The derivative of f of x is f prime of x equals 1 over x. One thing that is important to note is you can only take the log of positive numbers. So, the domain of the derivative function is only positive values of x. There are also other types of logarithmic functions. For example, the 7 is called the base, and this function is the log base 7 of x. You might remember some of the rules for rewriting logarithms. 
This one can be rewritten as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of 7. And remember that the natural log of 7 is just a number, so we can rewrite it as 1 over the natural log of 7 times the natural log of x. And then the derivative is 1 over the natural log of 7 times 1 over x. And of course, there is nothing special about 7. So this gives us a general rule for derivatives of logarithmic functions. In general, the derivative of the log base a of x is 1 over the natural log of a times 1 over x. Here are two examples. Take a minute to think about for which of these examples we can use the rule for logarithmic functions. Like with the power rule, you can take the derivative of two log functions that are added together. The base of the first is 10, and the base of the second is 2, so you would get 1 over the natural log of 10 times 1 over x for the derivative of the first, plus 1 over the natural log of 2 times 1 over x for the derivative of the second. Also, like with the power rule, you can multiply the derivative of log base 10 of x by the coefficient. The base is 10 and the coefficient is 7, so you would get 7 times 1 over the natural log of 10 times 1 over x. Here are two more examples. Can we use the rule with them? First, take a look at the input of h of x. The log rule only works when there is just an x for the function's input. It doesn't work if there is a sign of x inside. So, we can't use the rule above for finding the derivative of h of x. At first, it looks like j of x has the same issue as h of x because the input isn't just x. But in this case, we can use properties of logarithms to rewrite j of x as the log base 10 of 2 plus the log base 10 of x. Then we can find its derivative. Remember that the log base 10 of 2 is a constant number, so its derivative is 0, and the derivative of the log base 10 of x is 1 over the natural log of 10 times 1 over x. So now, we've seen a rule for computing derivatives of logarithmic functions, and some examples of how to use the rule.